Hello. I'll be with you in a minute. This tree is nearly finished now. Well, I always think, and I think you'll probably agree with me, that somehow or other mincemeat is the Cinderella of um, Christmas cooking. It's, it, it's not properly treated. Those dreadful little nitty mince pies, you know, first bite up to the mincemeat, second bite over, and all those dull things, and there's just divine things you can do in a care. Take, for example, crepe stuffed with mincemeat, Christmas pancakes. You know you make those in advance, slosh them onto pieces of wax paper or greaseproof paper, and then store them either in the refrigeration or in your freezer, whichever you want, and draw on them as you want them, and then all you have to do is cook your mincemeat first, because you only need to warm these through. Look at me being clumsy. And then put lashings of mincemeat in a pancake and roll them up and then line them down a dish which you've buttered. I've done some of them already, do you see? And there goes another one. And I'm using a finger, because you can't cook without using them. Now and roll that one up. And so on, and so on, and so on. And then you put those into a buttered dish, like that. You sift icing sugar over them, thickly. Then you put a piece of foil on top. And like that, when you're ready for them, you warm them in the oven. Gas mark five for 15 minutes, as Sarah, my dear Sarah, will do for me now. Thank you, my love. Now that's the start. That's minced meat pancakes instead of the inevitable mince pies. Now then, the, my favourite. It's a thing called a mincemeat galette, and I think it's much better than a um, mince pie. Easier, too. You see, you'll have two circles of paste. And, of course, the paste, like everything else, is in the booklet. This one's rolled out very thinly and put onto a lightly floured baking sheet, and Sarah will bake that for me at gas mark six, on show of above centre. But this has a wetted baking sheet. Some of the moisture has dried off here. And you take a thicker circle of puff paste and you slap it on. And then, like that, you put it in the oven, but first you do something else to it. Now, let me show you. You make your crisscross lines really rather deeply over the surface, you see, like this. And then you make lines rather deeply in the reverse, so. And then, when you've got those, you can do them as closely or as widely apart. They're best if they're a little bit wide apart, rather like these. And then you take raw, unbeaten egg white, and you pour that over the top, and run it right over till it comes to the very, very edge. And then sifted icing sugar or caster sugar all over it. And that'll all sink in when it melts into the oven, as I told you to bake. And when it comes out, this is what you can make it look like. Now, let me talk about that for one second. I've split the centre lid and pushed it up with mincemeat on either side. And that's all I've done. It looks really rather delicious, don't you think? And it is so jolly easy. There's a couple of my armour paste leaves on there because, you know, I'm always one for tiddling things up. Now, what have you got for me, Sarah? Oh, yes. Well, now, for the ones, especially the younger ones, who are newcomers to my, my cooking, uh, we must make a proper mince pie. So I've rolled the paste out because most of you older ones know it so well you don't want to see it over and over again in depth. But I'll make it clear to you young ones that you roll out paste fairly thinly, all in the booklet, of course, and the instructions, and you put it into a flan ring on a floured baking sheet. It's much easiest this way. Then, when you've got it in, you take a rolling pin. And you run the rolling pin right over it. And gather up the trimmings, and that's all there is to lining it out. See? Gather them all up. Like that. Now then, you take the mincemeat, and you dump it inside. Lovely, rich mincemeat. And, of course, when you make your mincemeat, do remember that last year's is always better than this year's. And all you have to do to keep it going is just to open it up every six months and give it a little flick of rum, a little flick of brandy, and sometimes a little flick of extra orange juice. Keep it moist and shining and lovely. You see? Fill that up like that. Now, when it's filled, you take an ordinary table knife and you run the knife round like this, pushing the paste over the mincemeat all the way. As I said, this is very familiar to some of you, but if it isn't familiar to the ones who spend those dreary Christmas Eves facing the prospect of making those nasty little things which men hate, it will be, I hope, a saving. I have found it so throughout my adult life. Now then, you have the second piece of paste, which in this case, of course, because of saving time, is rolled out. And you slap that over the top. And once again, you go in for your rolling pin routine. You see? And of course, a proper rolling pin without any handles on, because that's the easiest kind, and it's the professional kind as well. So perhaps somebody will be kind enough to slip one in your stocking for Christmas. And there is your mince pie for Sarah to put blind into the oven and to bake for me. 
and she's bringing over for me at the same time one that she and I baked here today and we've tiddled it up and it's ready for service at one point. Like all these things, there's an easy way and a difficult way of handling it. The tiddling up is simply sifted icing sugar and little almond paste leaves like holly leaves. But two slices, money for a rope. And never any fear of breaking. And that's the way to pick it up. And that's the easy way of using it. We put that over there and meet it again presently. And probably if we have the time, we'll cut it and see what it's like inside. And here comes Sarah with yet another way of using mince meat. I think it's fun to see how many different ways you can do it throughout the year. Now, this is my ordinary Swiss roll panel, the one that never cracks. And I'm going to tell you that this one's a fortnight old, so if it doesn't crack, I shall be the one to be surprised. Now, you put your mincemeat on. Baked, of course, not raw mincemeat. And then spread it out as quickly and easily as you can, right over the surface of the sponge. I have already cut the lengthwise edges of the sponge, because those would crack in any event. And I think they've been eaten by various people on the set while I've been preparing. Now, let me take a little time over this. That's right. Bring that into there. Because there's nothing more disappointing than coming to the edge and finding there's nothing there. Is there now? There we go. Now the part that the housewife is so scared of because of the rubbish that's been written in some of these women's magazines about rolling it up and letting it get cold rolled up and then unrolling it and standing inside the roof of your mouth when all you really do is just to make a crease in the grease proof that it's lying on like that and then just tow it away from you. And there is your Swiss roll. Everything in life is so easy when you know the way. It's just a question of the pleasure that I get selfishly out of sharing the ways of the things I've happened to discover with you. Okay, now I want you to come over to the cooker with me. Here. I haven't finished my mincemeat story. Butter and a proper omelette pan I've got here. That is to say, iron, steep sided, and unlike cook, never washed. Turn the gas up full. And stand it over there and wait until the butter not only dissolves and makes a rude swearing noise on the pan, but also turns slightly brown at the edges. Now, I'll never know why, I never have known why, the butter turns brown, and that's the right moment to dip your egg mixture in, and yet the omelette isn't brown. Now, the egg mixture is, in fact, just eggs, beaten up lightly, but not bashed about into the bandy, and with little flakes of butter. Some of you may be able to see those beaten in with it. Little flakes of butter beaten in with it. Now the omelette pan is brown, the butter is brown, so I can tip it in. Now don't get yourself worked up about making omelettes. Let's get rid of that. Hold the pan in one hand and work with the flat of the fork. Pick up the frills as they form round the outer edge with the flat of the fork. I'm going to be noisy now, so I'm going to stop talking. Shake, scoop, scoop, shake, drawing in the frills until until you've got a firm set on the base, but the top is still wet. Then get rid of the fork. Work with a spatula, run it round. So now you will want to turn down your heat, which sounds odd, because you don't want it to get like leather while you're putting in the mincemeat. So you put the mincemeat over the surface in the centre, nice and richly filled. So there's a school of thought in France which says that if an omelette looks perfect, it doesn't taste perfect. So I'm never quite sure whether I agree with it or not. Now then, over with that chap, up with the flame again, seal those two edges together partially. With that flame. Thank you, my darling. Now, turn it all off. Take the pan like this, and tip pan and omelette at sharp angles to each other. And so, turn it out onto the dish. 
But I always feel it looks a bit naked like that. So I like to dust it with sifted icing sugar. And there it is. Now, I'm on my way to this table where I've got a lot of talking to do with you. I want first to get a damp cloth because one of the disfiguring things, I think, is when you sift the icing sugar on and then you've got an unsightly rim round the edge. Now I've got an unsightly rim round me, so I'll have to dust my hands as well. And then we'll talk about all this. Remember something about omelettes. Something utterly and totally vital, which I want you to bear in mind at all times. An omelette, when it is turned out, should be wet in the middle, or, as the French call it, baveuse, because omelettes go on cooking, even on a warm plate. And therefore, by the time it's served, or for instance, when the studio wants to eat this after I've finished talking to you, it'll be like leather, unless you've got it wet in the middle, as that is. Do you see? Now, let's go round and see what we've got. First of all, let's cut a slice of this. Put it here for you to have a look at, and that's what your mincemeat Swiss roll looks like. Now then, the classic, well, almost classic now, I've been doing it for so long, but I was the first to start this. Light years ago, the mince pie, which Pa likes. Lots of mincemeat. No dirty great doorstep of pastry to work through before you get to the filling. In every way, French and classic. But an English dish. Argue, would you? Come out. There. Now you get enough mincemeat, don't you? Really enough mincemeat. Now, I want to talk for a moment about this. I'm going to reach for a spoon here because I want you to see when you serve it that that still is wet in the middle. Then it's really delicious. Now, have you got those little pancakes for me, my darling? Because that's the last thing to talk about. That's right. Thank you very much. And then beside me here, the pancakes filled with the mincemeat. And, of course, if you want to, you can put a lovely last touch in. Warm a few drops of rum or brandy, just to lend up your finger. Put them over as you're carrying it to table, but remember to do this while you carry it, and that makes the flames burn and keep burning all the time. Do you see? Keep it moving with the brandy, and then the flames will go on burning, and the same with the Christmas pudding, which I hope will be a help to you in what you do. Now, can we go back over this? There is nothing that I've shown you about which the details are not in the booklet, so that we can go hand in hand together over Christmas. And may I say, how much I admire the housewives of Britain in these appalling present conditions for their courage in trying to give their families another super Christmas. So like Tiny Tim, God bless you all, I say. Good night.